Well, I think when you look at why a dean or whatever would dismiss it, it's because they don't want to ruin somebody's academic future. Mm -hmm. But if you put a system in place that does not allow them mm -hmm. to have that kind of judgment, like if you put a system in place that says first strike, you get rehabilitate, rehabilitative services. We're going to put you in this class. And I know you don't like it, but your, mm -hmm. your instructor presented evidence that you plagiarized, so we're going to put you in this class. Mm -hmm. You're not in jeopardy of losing anything. You'll still be enrolled as a student. You must go to this class. Second one, the same way they do with academics in general. You can be uh, put on probation, suspended, whatever. Uh -huh. um, it takes it out of the hands of the dean, and the dean no longer has to feel the weight of, hey, Sylvia, you, 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 you didn't quote right, so now you, and I don't really want to kick you out of school for that, but let's just, it let's work it out. the Office of Conduct, and then they make the determination, and then, because I've had to do this a couple times, and if, it gets bounced back to me and I have to go ahead and grade it, but something still goes in their permanent file. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that process, but then if they want to jump me, they still can. Yeah. So they can continue to, and that's why I'm saying it. It helps to have the administration that this is going to be a core value that Texas mm -hmm. Tech has moved to tier one status. We want to elevate our game. Mm -hmm. So everybody's going to be held to a higher standard type mm -hmm. thing. But see, the thing that I like about the rehabilitation that he's suggesting is the fact is that we're actually showing interest and passion in yeah. our students mm -hmm. and allowing them to still continue to grow and not saying, well, you screwed up, see you later, yeah. you know, because mm -hmm. that shows that we don't necessarily care about yeah. what our students are doing because we should be the ones that are educating them in the first place and we could very well be the reason why they're not doing what we expect yeah. out of them. Yeah. 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 And then, and then the other side of it is it, it protects the heart of the instructor because if the instructor is saying, hey, you did this wrong, but I want you to get better, so I'm going to push you in this regard, mm -hmm. um, then it makes it easier. Like, it makes it more palatable for more professors, more instructors to say, Johnny, go ahead and we're going to send you over here. You made this mistake. We sent it to the office. You're not going to be suspended. So when mom calls, the bird in my baby. <laughs> can say, well, no, this is going to help them in the long run because your yeah. student possesses great potential and we at Tech, we don't accept losers, so your kid is going to be somebody and this is going to help them academically, scholarly, and as a human, learn how to make and maneuver through this. Mm -hmm. it, you know, it, it just it does something when you focus more on strengths and building those than it does when you focus on punishment. Like, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. so there's... Mm -hmm. I was going to say, well... <laughs> Are we looking at one strike you're out or one strike rehabilitation? Second, because it's, it's like the academics would be. You know how they say, you know, you get the one semester for, and then after that you just go um, or extended suspension or whatever. It, that same kind of idea. Like we already have a system in place. Why not just use that to help our students instead of hurting them academically? Oh, you on probation? Mm -hmm. You got to go to a PADR class, which I'm grateful for because I get to teach them. <laughs> but you know. Like, let's also show them how to use that. Like, use that same system to show them how to write, how to, and we wouldn't even have to hire anybody because the writing center does that already. Mm -hmm. You could just funnel that into this. See, you got to know how to keep that. <laughs> and we have librarians as well exactly. that are specific for each exactly. major. For that discipline. That they can come in and give a type of writing that they need. I've actually had mm -hmm. some of the psychology, well, psychology librarian to come mm -hmm. in and give a talk and say, this is, this is where you actually look for information, so you're not getting stuff from Wikipedia. Yes. And then from that, this. it even has like little things that helps you learn how to cite. And I mean, it can really be educational. And mm -hmm. this idea that we want to obviously educate the students, I mean, it's not just so that way they can have their piece of paper and leave. Like we want them to actually be, you know, scholars, good, productive mm -hmm. members of society. And so I like this idea of rehabilitating them if they make a mistake and still teaching them process. You can bounce back from mistakes. It shouldn't be a final like you don't. Or even or even put in the position to say, ah, it's kinda iffy. So we're gonna let it slide this time. Because that creates a situation where I'm gonna tell my friend, oh it's okay, you can do to this point. Like you can do all of this right here, but don't do more than this because they'll they'll no, kick you out. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I was gonna ask, is there so is there gonna be like maybe a Standard set that hey, if this student, if this student did a whole copy and paste, submitted it, is that more egregious than maybe just doing a one sentence? Are those considered equals? And and that's that's what we have to be black and white because if we say 
that plagiarism at all gets you into this semester long citation and writing class, <laughs> citation <laughs> research course, then it doesn't matter because yeah, you can copy and paste, and that's egregious, right? Like, that's wrong, and it's not fair. But at the same time, if you make levels and, and intensities of what's acceptable, then Billy, who has one sentence off, could, could cry and say, well, I only did one sentence. Why am I here for the whole semester? Like, he was in here, this is egregious. And if, if you say, this is just the rule. And I know you don't like it, Billy, and I know your mama don't like it, and they threatening to take you out of tech, and I understand it. But this is the rule, because we want you to be the best Billy you can be. And this is going to help you be great, Billy. And you don't have to like it, but you have to do it. If you still want to be a member of the Texas Tech family, you've got to do this. I guess you get into a little bit more sticky wicket with that, though, then. What do you do about someone that's not necessarily plagiarism, but they're researching things, you know, but they come up with the same idea, and so it does come out, like, on Turnitin, where, you know, it's yeah. pretty similar. Yeah, it's not, it's not plagiarized. I mean, they're using the same ideas, the same words and whatnot, and change things around. You still consider that, that they have to go it's for like that? It's like they're just paraphrasing. Yeah. yeah they're still plagiarizing. But, yeah, because yeah. even if you don't cite a paraphrase, it's still considered an academic integrity issue. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's, that's they, the whole point. At somebody else's thoughts that's the whole point of turning in is to say, hey, red flag here, yo, this isn't good. And so, in my mind, even because the instructor is who submits the request in for whatever, like they're the one that, that enacts this whole momentum behind uh, academic integrity pursuits or whatever, um, it would be the instructor's job to say, hey, wait a minute, this, this is 98% plagiarized. What is what right. is this? Is it, uh, is it an issue of paraphrasing? Is this a copy and paste issue? Mm -hmm. And without regard, the professor is being responsible for pushing that up the line. I guess that kind of brings me, since you've set that, to another question. So we're generally talking about undergrads here, but this also happens at the graduate level. Yes, mm -hmm. oh, very much so. Mm -hmm. I know there's there's been folks in my program that have gotten to skate. On and don't they just make you angry? <laughs> you gotta do it right. You gotta do it right too. And so, but what what is the mechanism to ensure that instructors, professors, whoever these individuals may be, are abiding by this code? Because they're not. What Absolutely. ensures that? Because you know what? I know this is my student. I know this. I know this is my student. He has a hard situation, but I know he looked at this thing. I'm just going to tell him to rewrite the paper. Okay. What ensures that? the professor is going to actually report this incident. You can, you can cherry pick who you want. Yes, you can. E even with the policy, and everybody knows you about it. You can still cherry pick. Exactly, because if it's left up to me to do it, and I like Craig, and Craig and I seem to have a, a bonding process in the classroom, I'm less likely to do something to Craig that may make it more difficult for us to sustain, say, a relationship and meet a mentor. Mm -hmm. And this isn't all professors, but this is some. Some of them will say, ah, I'll rewrite the paper. Exactly. I mean, ah, you probably should. If you copied and pasted this. You should probably do this differently. And, and so and I think. At the same token, because him and Craig are close, but him and Billy aren't oh, not, close. So, Billy, guess what? Billy. You messed up. You, you <laughs> missed <laughs> a sentence. I voted the semester long for me. You class. missed a sentence, <laughs> Billy. With you went. Yeah, and yeah. and that's, that's the reality yeah. of it, though, because I've seen it in our department. You know, Craig got away with it, but Billy's no longer in the program. I mean, it, his keyword, there's got to be some accountability, not only at the student level, but at the instructor professor level, at the administrative level. Mm -hmm. Everybody has to be held accountable. I can't just cherry pick because you're my good student and I'm going to look good, you're going to be on my CV type thing, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. So, and everyone, and everyone the body finds it's, it. It's hard though because there's a human element to this whole thing. Like, we have our picks. There are people that we just like more than others. And not because they're bad people, not because we're bad people, we just click better. And so we're less likely to want to like, I don't want to throw Danielle under the bus. That's just it. There, there isn't a real solution. This is when the honor and the values that Texas Tech expects their students to abide by, they must hold and hire instructors, professors, administrators who believe and will die for the same thing. Mm -hmm. Because otherwise, you get students who may or may not live by it because the professors, the right. models, don't live by it either. Held to a higher standard of the same honor code. Like, yeah, we all have the okay. same honor code, but then our skill as an instructor, I'm held ten times 
Exactly. Okay. Like, okay. I should be okay. so I need to be the example. So okay. if I screw up, my punishment's going to be a lot harsher than what a yeah. student yeah. is yeah. because yeah. I was the one who allowed that to happen. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, exactly. Okay. And so, you know, buy-in is, is the word you would use, like, oh, they got to buy into the system and it has to be a good system and blah, 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 blah. And it could work for a while, but I think ultimately there has to be a, a communal shift in the entire university mm -hmm. where okay. everybody buys in. Everybody's like, this will make tech, that, it'll be that school. It'll be the school in Texas, there's UT or Rice or U of H, and um, so all this kind of stuff, but this is what's going to set Texas Tech University apart. It's not Cliff Kingsbury. It's this. <laughs> and I think adding that rehabilitation type of class really promotes this idea that we want to help our students yeah. and whoever is here to actually grow as a person. So it's not, so even at the graduate student level, it's like, I am doing this and I'm reporting you because I want you to be a better scholar by the time you get out. And not just, well, I, you know, you're just going to get in trouble, which has a very different feel. So if we really harp on, we want to help people get better instead of just, you know, we're just cracking the whip. It's just, I want to help you grow. And this is, you're not going the right direction, but I want to help you.